Yeah. yeah. Do you want to just keep rolling? Yeah, we'll just keep rolling. Okay. Um, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Episode 62. It's uh, Tuesday. No, it's Monday. It's Monday. Yeah. We're a little bit dis- unorganised. A bit here and there, you know. All over the shop. I've lost my voice. Yeah, but you're still you're soldiering through. Mm. Uh, how are you and how'd you sleep? Yeah, I'm good. Um, slept slept pretty well. F- mm. bit, bit cough, so I was coughing last night. Mate. Like, I'm not sick. But yeah. I've got the most aggressive cough. It's like hooping cough or something. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. It's, it's yeah. real bad. We sound like a quarantine station from the 1940s. Oh, <laughs> like, do, you, do you actually feel sick as well? Or yeah, pretty it, crook. Yeah, for me, it's um, like, you know, when you just feel like run down and you feel real bad. I don't have any of that. It's literally just a cough. I, yeah, I went and did a PCR. Yeah, um, for peace, peace of mind. Peace of mind. Came back negative straight away. Mm-hmm. Also, shout out to the PCR people because they can't, it got it back within like six hours. They're still going. Still flying. We love you. Um, but yeah, I, I don't feel like like too bad anymore. But the other day, I, I felt pretty rough. I, pl- I had to play a game, a game of footy when mm-hmm. I was sick. And oh, mate, it's hard work. That's how I lost my voice. Yeah, you um, you get that negative result and you take it to the bank. Yep. You're not questioning false negatives. Doesn't matter. You just matter. start or run with it. I was thinking today we uploaded a... Oh, I uploaded a TikTok, I think, on the 9 to 5 account a while ago. Like maybe a couple of months ago, mm. and it's talking about hey, like yeah, COVID sucks, but like you know, it's, let's kind of it's time to start moving on. Mm. Um, don't stress about it too much. And I was thinking about the abuse I got for that. I would love to go back to that video and look at the comments and just yeah. like how kind of silly some of those people look because like at the time COVID wasn't as intense then, yep. and people are still freaking out. And mm. it was like you could go outside, but if you didn't want to, yeah, it's an interesting topic. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> don't have much more to add on it. No, but. Yeah, going back to the cough, it's the main topic of discussion for today. I got home Saturday night or mm. Sunday morning. We got home like 4 a.m. Mm. Mate, I was, um, I, I thought I was actually going to die. Yeah. Not to be a hypochondriac, <laughs> but I got home and I was wheezing. <laughs> and I thought, you know how COVID, they say you need to get on a respiration system because <laughs> like shortness of breath. I felt like if I went to sleep, I was going to die <laughs> because I kept coughing and I could only get like half my breath back. I didn't even hear you. That was so aggressive. I was coughing up my guts. <laughs> um, how did you sleep? Just before I just we, slept. We, before we move on. Oh, okay. yeah. As in, yeah, yeah. It just, was good. Yeah. We'll, we'll run with it kind of thing. We'll um, run with it. Yeah. What else is going on? Yeah, so, well, the cough and the... I'm sorry about the voice. For those listening, I, I know it's a pain. Um, it kind of sounds like that raspy, hot guy morning mm, voice. I, I feel like it's like past that, though. It's like not the attractive yeah. sound. It's just annoying. Yep. Uh, yeah. But someone was meant to take my place. Yes, the, so we were meant to get the marketing intern yesterday mm. and um, he rocked up and he said he was too tired. <laughs> so shout out to Jack Higgins. You He's fucking trying dog. to get a crack in the ones on the 9 to 5 podcast mm. and uh, he just didn't rock up. So yeah, no, well, he rocked up. He was just like, oh, can we just watch the footy instead? Take, 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 mate. I said, yeah, whatever. I can't force you to do it. So so he put up with him for a few hours and then yeah. sent him on his way. Exactly. Um, but yeah, thank, thanks, Jack, for almost filling in for me. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it really means a lot to us, champion. What would you have spoken about? Well, I wrote the run sheet here. Mm. We the deal was we weren't going to talk anything about footy. Like arguably the hottest player in the league right now, and just like not talk about footy at all. <laughs> just leave it. Just have like the general nine to five chat. So dating, mate. <laughs> dating. What, what do you think about it? Get him with chicks, bro. Like, what's the deal? Oh, uh, he's got a girlfriend. He can't you know? add. Yeah. yeah. Fair. Nah. Well, it would have been good. Mm-hmm. Um, but sorry, we couldn't bring you that. You got my grim head mm-hmm. today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, I wanted to bring up a topic that is a little bit more serious today, mm. and. I saw quite an alarming video on TikTok. I think I commented it and it was like quite new on the feed kind of thing just mm. to throw my support. And it was this guy, uh, I think his name's Blake Hargraves. Yep. He posted a video. He's just playing local league footy, it looked like. Yep. And um, he, shout out to him. He only had like 18,000 followers, like only. Mm. And people were like shouting out to him on the grounds oh, you fucking gay. Yeah. Like, it's th- these aren't horrible. my words. These are just quoting what is like, you fucking poofed are like, go and kill yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like your TikToks are fucking gay, all this shit like that. Um, just like literally some of the worst things I've heard. I'm sure like it's quite standard maybe in those like outer leagues and stuff. It's just acceptable language for like hurling abuse. But mate, like, like it just got me thinking if someone says that to me, I feel like I got pretty thick skin, you know, I got a good support network and mm. things like that. And we deal with the things in life. But for someone who maybe doesn't have that support network, I've got no kind of idea on the context of Blake, but like, what if that's the last straw for them? Like, yeah. what if you go like, 
fuck i was just thinking that's horrible man like, yeah i saw that video it's pretty pretty rough to listen to um i feel like uh like local footy and country footy is especially is like you have because you can drink at the games you can't do that in the like amateur leagues often mm-hmm. um you, you get these like people who sit around in a group and you know when you're with like a group mm-hmm. of mates you'll sit around you're drinking mm-hmm. and it kind of escalates like mm-hmm. one th- you say one thing it gets worse, gets yeah, worse yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. i feel like that happens a lot at footy um, oh, yeah. they're just trying to like impress their little yeah group of mates. i heard one of the comments was like like don't go kill yourself yeah or bro it's like fucking hell dude like there needs to be some form of accountability and um like that's pretty horrible uh but you put yourself out there and you're gonna cop it i th- yeah it's so I just posted a, a duet of it like a few hours ago and I reckon 97% of the comments are like, like well said, like the facts, like, you know, in support of this kind of movement of it's not okay. And then a lot of people are like, you know, fucking toughen up. And it's just like user 9738 who's never yeah, yeah. posted anything in their lives and has no idea what it feels like to, to cop. Like I've had my fair share when that avocado video was made, I'd probably 2000 duets made of me and daily death threats like yeah. on my Instagram. And, you know, I just put the phone off for a few days. I was, turn off. but they've got no idea what it actually feels like for someone who, you know, potentially hasn't got that you mm. know, experience on social media and just copying it. Like, fuck, if I didn't have a good support network sometimes and people to talk to about it, like it could be pretty rough. And there's one thing to like cop it. Oh, yeah, you're right. There's one thing to like cop it. Um, online but there's another thing to cop it like when you're uh you know in person or at the flesh like look i i've played a bit of footy and stuff and like i cop it every now and then not not anywhere near as bad as that and like when you look over at the person and they look genuinely pissed off Mm -hmm. or like they're genuinely abusing you and they like look like some psycho across the fence it's a little bit like eye-opening it's like oh shit like that's you're a really angry person. Why are they so nasty, And, like, dude? I'm in real life and you want to, like, you genuinely want me to, like, do my ACL or something. Yeah, it's fucking so nasty. They're just, like, yeah, I don't know. I think people like that need to take a good hard look at themselves. And, like, I'm all for, like, you know, hurling a bit of, like, yeah playful abuse. Like, saying, oh, you know, you're shit or something like that. Like, that's fine. E- even, like, you know, like, go make a TikTok, all that. Like, yeah, to be honest, if I found out one of my opposition made TikToks, yeah, yeah. I'd probably get into them as well about it. And, you know, there's an element of sport, like, sledging and talking, like, trash talking and things like that. You know, Higo will give us a weekly update of how he's, <laughs> the trash he's talked to someone and we're like, that's a fucking good one, all that shit yeah, like it's that. hilarious. But it's never, like, go kill yourself. Like, I think a yeah. line needs to be drawn there hmm. because that, that's pretty rough. The people shouting in that video sounded old as well like at least over 25 dude i got secondhand embarrassment from that just mm. like uh, i said it in my tiktok it's like fuck I, I usually think before i speak before i project my voice and say something so it's like how did your brain cells kind of function and rub together mm. and say you fucking faggot go kill yourself mm. like oh, damn but why didn't i think of that bro that yeah. is such a clever it's just a disgusting witty, yeah like response i don't know yeah no it's feral it's it's really bad and often i think um especially with footy like the better you are the the more abuse you're mm. gonna cop um so that's like prime train for instance didn't you get hit off the ball or something like that i think yeah. the story was emerging yeah that's it sounds like you got hit off the ball i don't know yeah. if that's for tiktok or not but like yeah. you know that shit happens all the time mm. um but yeah i don't know it's it's difficult and at the end of the day if you put yourself out there especially on social media you're gonna cop it like there's i'm not saying it's okay by mm. any means like it's not okay yeah but like it's not not everything is you know butterflies and roses like mm. you you gotta expect that you're gonna cop some shit um, yeah I, I also think the people in the comments who are like oh toughen up hmm. like you've probably never put yourself out there and you don't know how it feels to i know there is an element of toughen up and have thick skin and you need to if you're in this industry but maybe just try to have an open mind and understand how the other person might feel like this blake guy is definitely posting like unusual content for the general footy stuff is showing mm. how he used to not be happy with his shape before and how he's got it absolutely ripped now and there's probably a lot of insecure guys wanting to like pin something and tear him down it's mm. like fuck i'd be and he's probably by himself as well you, we got me and you yeah it's just maybe have some perspective he's probably a lovely dude and doesn't deserve that kind of flack so yeah yeah absolutely um and yeah it, it's hard because like you almost don't want to like complicate that too much yep. like especially on the footy field because i reckon the people mm-hmm. hurling that abuse mm-hmm. are just not as bought in on it like they don't understand it and they're just shouting it to try yeah. and get to him yeah which still doesn't make it okay yeah um but i think it's like you know blake if you are listening mate like it's not 
don't take it personally. Like they, yeah. they don't actually, I don't think they actually mean what it's, they're saying. Even, they're um, just doing it for a reaction. For There's been countless occasions where an Indigenous player has just been hurled something, you know, disgusting mm. like called i don't even have to say it but just like yeah, pretty yeah. bad it message Feral on stuff. social media and it's because that person tries to jump to like the worst thing that they can to get an emotional response from them whether it be there in the front row and they yell out to yeah um, Adam and Gold i remember zach fisher yeah. posting like zachy williams getting like a really bad message and like putting it up on the story straight away it's like guaranteed when that person gets called out they backpedal they're so hard. embarrassed and they backpedal i even saw you know that guy matt parker who plays for richmond yeah yeah i yeah. saw someone like dm him like it was like a photo of a monkey or something like that yeah and he just put it straight up on his like as an instagram post and mm. the guy was like responded and backpedaled and went i'm so glad you called me out on this like i need to do better blah 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 like Good, good that he's correcting his behavior, but fuck yeah. the back pedal when it gets called out. Yeah. It's like they're embarrassed for what they said. So maybe if you are one who to hurl abuse and things like that, maybe just think before you project, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely think before you project. And and you know, in the throes of uh, you know excitement at a game and stuff, like mm-hmm. still what you're saying is mm-hmm. uh, has effect. Hundred um, percent. But generally, only the good players get it, mate. Yeah, I haven't had any abuse all year. Yeah, not gonna lie. Well, you so did get a best on, so that would be so modest, nah, mate. Nah, none of that, none of that. <laughs> At your country game, I don't rec- I don't think there was much abuse. Like, I was running around with the camera and stuff. That yeah. was, it was all respect, even from the opposition players, all wanting photos and stuff like that. Yeah. Just very respectful. No, so. pretty good in general. The only bit I copped was, like, after I got in, like, a bit of a push and shove because yeah. I was looking after. And, like, fair enough. Yeah. Like, it's... And, you know, the things that were said were just, like, going, make fucking TikTok. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, it's so fair. Play like, on. Emotions are high. So fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, no... I, yeah, no one's saying any... And generally, like, the players aren't saying any of that feral stuff yeah. that was in that video. Yeah. Um, like it's often across from the sidelines which is just like oh one of my rounds i had like some runners you know who were talking shit to me they were young lads i think they listened to the podcast and it was all pretty funny but it's like look there's nothing i can do if you're a runner and it's the same as if you're on the sideline like Mm -hmm. you're not going to jump the fence and start hitting them um so it's just like a comment section (laughs) mike tyson (laughs) (laughs) just go lose lose it oh god (laughs) i'm a player but yeah um yeah watch the abuse and look after people people Um, i reckon and how is your body feeling? Yeah, the body's good, mate. Uh, can't complain other than the sickness. Uh, I feel the best I've did, ever did felt. Did you feel like you could still run okay even while you were sick? Um, I, I copped a hit to my rib, oh, true. And, which affected things a lot uh, for running uh, and for breathing. But uh, in general, it was all right. Uh, I, I drugged up pretty hard, so yeah, I couldn't yeah. feel much. So like feeling sickness aside, feeling yeah. fit, feeling strong, the, feeling like you can... The best, mate. Like, this is one of the first times where I've done a proper pre-season and mm. gone, oh, shit, this is why they do it so hard. Like, yeah. I feel really good. My, mate, I feel fine after games in, from a recovery so perspective. Good. I can go for walks and stuff. Yeah. I used to not be able to walk down our stairs last yeah, season. Yeah, um, how about How about you? you got States coming up soon. Yeah, States for powerlifting. Uh, it's less than two weeks now, so mm. feeling good um like the training block has been pretty aggressive i just hit a new squat pr so i'm kind of hyped hmm. uh doing this potty now 200 kilos for two reps that was my previous max so hopefully we can put some numbers up so i i get less people talking shit about how there are 16 year olds who can lift more than me yep uh but yeah we will continue we'll run with it but yeah everything going well uh, everything's kind of been optimized in terms of nutrition every meal is accounted for 3,800 calories 60 percent carbs kind of rough because mm. it's easy when you're on high cows just to go down to kfc and that fat macronutrient is like 40 percent. yeah but my coach has me on 60 percent carbs so that's like i'm not sure if you when hugo was here i was eating that rice thing took me a while to get through yeah it was like i literally put a kilo of raw rice in mm. the thing mm. and split it between six containers i reckon there's 400 grams of rice in oh that thing. mate it's getting through it yeah ticking over so it's just heaps of carbs Training sessions are good, sleeping well. And one thing I have allowed myself to do is, uh, you know, when Saturday night rolls around, still hanging out with my mates. Hmm. Not absolutely send it, have like 20 beers, but I might have two pints, something like that. Enjoy it. I, I, I think it's a good way to do yeah, it. Yeah, what's your thought process behind that? Obviously, I would like to send it and just start. Uh, it's a good feeling, love it. Sideways at the swan type thing. Always good. <laughs> yeah. But you you do appreciate the two pints that you do have. Mm. So 
Yeah, like, I know. They go down nice. It is, it is like it's fun dialing yourself in where you, you know, every macro is accounted for and every bit of sleep you're tracking and no beers or anything. I do want it. Like, yeah, I'm sure it'll make a difference, but you get to your powerlifting comp, yeah. you might be in the worst bloody mental ever because you haven't gone out once. I know, right? That's, that's the trade-off, dude. So I remember hearing this podcast, like the trifecta of happiness, right? It mm. was a sense of purpose, uh, not having money stress and having good personal relations and that social release. So I think you're actually doing yourself a disservice if you disallow yourself to hang out with mates, have a beer or two on the weekend. It's not that deep. Like, yeah, I, th- I don't think it's going to be that significant. My coach advocates for it. He says, just make sure it's away from those really hard sessions so it doesn't affect your recovery. Hmm. So on a Saturday, I won't have that heavy session in the morning yep. and, you know, have a, have a good time with the mates. I think it's really important to have that social release and actually enjoy your life while you're on these aggressive training blocks. Mm. Yeah, it's like what like I brought up last night. I remember I was listening to a podcast and Scott Pendlebury was in it and he was talking about like pre having a child, mm-hmm. he had everything dialed in for a game. Like before a game, he was in bed at 9 p.m., yep. you know, slept all the way through. No one, maybe even slept in a different bloody bed yeah. to his wife kind of yeah. thing. Um, and then like, you know, he'd play well and stuff. And then he had a kid mm-hmm. and there was, that all went out the window because, yeah. you know, you got a screaming kid yeah. all through throughout the night he said he was going into some games with like two hours sleep yep. he's like playing just as well if not better that's you yeah, know amazing. like obviously it's not a long-term thing but yeah i think we get too dialed into like everything's got to be perfect yep. and you obsess over it um and then you know end of the day the difference isn't too big yeah i don't know it's um like obviously there's a balance between having 28 beers three times a week um you know there's an accumulation there but just finding your balance having yeah. a, a crisp pint of Carlton Draft on tap oh, at, at the pub with the lads. I think there's there's nothing oh, better than that. Day, the footy's on. I oh, want to mate, get into it. Could. <laughs> Carlton Draft, mate. Absolutely. Do you reckon that's your pint of choice? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. As and I, as I've gotten older, I just like when I was younger, I was trying to do all these IPAs yeah. and stuff, which I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but mate, just a oh, nice pint of Carlton. It was so good. I was uh, at the Swan with some of my powerlifting mates. I haven't really been out with them at all, so I thought it'd be a bit of a kick. And lines were absolutely fucking stacked. Kids are coming out one in photos fucking absolutely awesome and i was with like two absolute units i was i was the weakest in the whole group it was like a group of the most elite powerlifters in the country and two of the blokes i was with uh they both got like 200 kilo plus bench presses like mm. 110 kilos absolute refrigerators they were wearing like all black and I, I was in the i was at the front and like people thought they were my security guards <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever so you were like we're in Fortnite trios where we dropping boys, we're dropping Gainesville, which is mm. fucking hilarious. Um, just like the entourage. And the lads like that. rolling to the swan. Maybe one day if we actually do get, you know, some serious fame, we'll have that entourage. <laughs> like fucking, you see 6 9 walking down Main Street in LA and he's got like eight, seven foot seckies and he's just like, this yeah, well, I think he's, Mexican he's for a different reason, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's trying not to get shot. Yeah, exactly. Maybe right. if we make a few controversial, controversial if, TikToks. If we, if we rat on some gang members, then yeah. we might need that. Well, Foti will come back. Oh, Foti from the mafia. <laughs> the mafia. What do you reckon? If he comes up to us, we're at public house or something, he comes up and he try, starts trying to staunch us. <laughs> Well, so. we won't touch him. We won't nah, touch we're him. lovers, not fighters, mate. Yeah. I'd, I'd give him my shoes. We won our last fight by 100 meters. Yeah, Take we it, bro. get out of there. Yeah. Fucking we're quick as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll be I'll, I'll be wearing the Alpha Zoom Kachobi <laughs> runners. Mate, you better catch me. Yeah. Good luck. You want to improve bulletproof hamstrings? Yeah, literally. Anyway, this is a favorite segment for everyone. Oh, what is it? We need to keep a roof over our yes. head, mate. Someone put a roof over our head. Yeah. I swear every time we drop the pod and you guys listen to this segment, you just buy a shit ton of stuff from our website and you actually do <laughs> keep a roof over our head. Yeah, we'll try and keep it interesting as well. So don't skip this part. Like mm. we're, we're going to talk through what we uh, what we got. Yeah. What do we got? I don't know. Fuck. No, no, no. Well, for me, my body's primed. I train alongside this power building uh, regime. Mm. Uh, my coach gives me like the powerlifting sessions, so four of those a week. And then I do like some hypertrophy sessions myself. And that's just like working on the aesthetic, you know, lateral raises, a few lat JPG pull downs, biceps, yeah. triceps, bit of neck, all that. So if you do, oh, I find this style of training quite unique because it's like you want to be as strong as possible, be big, strong lifts in the squat bench deadlift, but also not look like a sack of shit as well. Yeah. So like, you know, you're looking nice. Yeah. So for that reason, I've got the power building program. It's an extremely comprehensive uh training program with like 60 pages jam packed full of information we've been getting some amazing reviews if you've 
Follow me on Snapchat or Instagram. You've seen the reviews. Bloody 15-year-olds with 110 kilo pause bench presses. Pretty unreal. So if you don't mm. want to fall behind, um, get this program. It's 11 weeks of just pure intensity. And it's going to beat your ass and make you realize you actually haven't been training at proper intensity. Mm. Uh, and it is very different to your kind of trademark program. Isn't yeah. It? Well, I like a uh, match like powerlifting with aesthetics. I've mm. kind of done athletics kind of training or athlete training like an athlete with uh, aesthetics. Yeah. Um, so it's the same kind of thing where I'll be uh, training how I train for footy. Mm. Um, it's a upper, upper, lower split, six weeks. Mm. Uh, it's also got running in there. It's got a schedule. It's yep. going to tell you when to train, when to run, yep. when to do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you just need to buy it and do it. It's pretty simple. And it's just, you can go to our website, link in bio on mm. TikTok or Instagram and it's just a one-off transaction for 50 bucks. You yep. pair it with a personalized meal plan as well, which is like an anabolic recipe book. In terms of our apparel, we've actually had some new items come down. We've got the, the navy blue compound shorts. Mm. These are our squat proof uh, shorts. They're kind of like footy shorts with pockets. They're most so popular elite. item. Mm. And it's it's a new colorway. We had black, white. Uh, so the navy blue and white one is here. We've already had a bunch of people buy them. If you do want to get it, um, you can buy it. We've also got track suits. Mm, it's it's track suit weather. Here. I'm liking I, it. I love you know, waking up in the morning, chucking the tracksuit yeah. pants on, roll the socks up, wear the, the Kachobi shoes. Oh, it's a good look. Walk down the beach with the dog. Yep. Coffee in the Mog hand. It. Mog it. Oh, coffee in the hand. It's unreal. And if you guys do want to support us, you can go to our website, buy this stuff. Uh, code podcast will give you 10% off. Mm, podcast will give you 10% off. And thank you very much to everyone for supporting us. Speaking of support, mm-hmm. um, we haven't been given any handouts, mate. No. And I'm getting sick of it. We've got out of the trenches ourselves and we're still grinding still hustling we're hustling away it's uh we're just talking about it before and you know um like especially with the podcast but with most things we've done for um you know nine to five it's been kind of like we've just had to grind and do it ourselves Mm -hmm. um and we see other people that they like you know start a youtube channel start a podcast start this start that and it's like they get like a handout straight away Mm -hmm. which is you know probably down to their connections they have so shout out to them no animosity whatsoever but it's um it made me kind of think we're, we're very lucky for the yeah. fan base we've created mm-hmm. um, because it's been on our own and, and we've done it, you know, without any handouts. Yeah, it's, I'm pretty proud of it. Like we've just hit a thousand reviews on Spotify, which is pretty huge. Mm. Uh, shout out to you guys. If you haven't reviewed it, you can review it. I think it helps us get in the charts. We're like number nine today or something on the mm. health and fitness. So I don't know. I, I am really proud of the work we've done together. And like we did go through kind of a rough patch You know, sometimes we weren't even... A lot of the time we weren't even on the charts. And Mm. I think like we've every week we have like a meeting and we try to strategize what can we do better? What can we do this week? And I don't know, it's just kind of paid off, I guess. Yeah, it has paid off. Um, It's, I I suppose, like like you said, we've been in the trenches. Mm -hmm. When was that? That was kind of what, episode 30 through to 40? Like we just, we couldn't get any traction on the podcast. I was having a look at the the downloads for it and we had what we thought were pretty big guests and whatnot. Um, You know, like Fraser Wilson, Mm. all those guys. Shout out to them. We absolutely love them. But like the podcast wasn't doing too well and shout out to the real OG people that still listen to every episode back then. But I think, yeah, there weren't many people listening to it. We were going through pretty rough stages mentally. Like both our girlfriends broke up with us. Um, Fuck, we were having beef, you and me. Uh, Just everything was happening. You know, family members were passing away. Fuck, your boy was in the absolute trenches mentally. Just a bit of a welfare check, lads. And Mm. I don't know. Pulled our way out of it though. What's the quote? It's like, tough time don't last only tough tough people tough last. people last. Yeah, last yeah 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 well we lasted um so i suppose thanks to everyone for her, for listening like in bad the, lockdown as well into, oh mate grim grim times and it, like now i feel like the podcast is like it's just a, you know it is just a conversation mm. um and it's something we've we've learned along the way but uh no handouts we're going to keep hustling mate we we'll get to number one on the charts and we'll just sit there and not get anything thrown at us yeah that's yeah, fine it's like yeah all good all good bro mate, we'll, um, we'll go to america next and get on those charts bro it just makes me think like that was actually a really shit time makes me kind of sad looking back on it mm. what, what are your feelings towards it yeah it sucked Dude, that was so rough. I'm like, trying to, yeah, put it all. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro, I remember sorry. literally like like crying. Yeah. In my, fuck. It was full on, bro. You tears, yeah. I was, so what I do is I, in my in my walk-in robe, because I'm so privileged, all yeah, that shit. Yeah, must be nice. I close the door and I go and meditate. I remember times literally just crying. <laughs> tears. 
yeah oh, yeah that was so rough that stage i just escaped to the farm really and just yeah. like up gab's on his own here <laughs> yeah, no, good luck good. mate welfare check yeah um yeah i just like and go up and you know you get your mind off things and yeah keep going but yeah tough stuff and and we're here now we are here now here and to tell the tale. you know there will be ups and downs going forward but i think we're we deal with it well and hopefully you know, we can experience some high levels of success and get some mm. reward for the effort we're putting in yeah, and I just what, keep grinding. I wonder what, you know, it could be an interesting thing for the podcast, for the listeners, is like how you go, because like we don't get paid a whole lot for doing this podcast, no. um, you know, if anything at the moment, yeah. like we get it's a little all, bit. Yeah, but, people ask like where we get the money from. It's all indirect. It's all from like the sponsors that we mentioned. It's all mm. from uh, the our own products as well. We don't get paid from TikTok. We don't get paid from youtube yeah i think we just got monetized nothing from the podcast directly it's all just from yeah our own hustle really so i suppose the thought like you, you got to think about how we can monetize this without ruining the the, the podcast and I, you know what's what's next steps I, I reckon it would be you know trying to get signed is that yeah. is that the next thing you try and get signed but then like you're kind of giving the rights off you, you're selling the show to yeah. a brand yeah um, so, I mean, that's something you could think about. More sponsors. Well, we don't want to keep flooding don't want to clutter it. it. And we love our and sponsors. And you want to make sure, like, they're actually fitting well, like the ones we currently do. Yeah, so it's a hard one and, you know, not the most lucrative thing, but we love doing it. Oh, I wouldn't trade it for the world, even if we made no money off of it. I wouldn't swap mm. it. I think for us, we enjoy having these chats because it's almost like therapy for us, really. Yeah, 100%. Literally, we don't hold back, no filter, really. We don't mention specifics of names and stuff like that but we chat about like the stuff that's actually on our mind so mm. yeah very very few is edited out as well like we don't edit out much stuff so yeah. so it's a pretty raw experience but uh yeah hope you enjoy it yeah so following on from that you know the reason why we we do have to hustle a little bit uh we got our, our sponsors of the day mm. uh you know keep a roof over our heads so lads and that these aren't like we take any deal. We've had to kick so many brands back and stuff yeah. like that. Ones that actually align with it. So what do we have, Louis? Uh, well, let's start with Tomorrow Skincare. The goats, the mm-hmm. dons of skincare. They're my favorites. Uh, numbered one through to four. Mm-hmm. Literally tells you what to do. Wash your face. Do this, do that, and then moisturize it. Yep. What do you reckon? It's, you know, us men, we're pretty bad at the, the hygiene stuff, skincare, all of that. And this is just super easy. I take it in my gym bag with me. After I've had like a, a heavy session, squatting for two hours, just absolutely sweated up. Mm. Go in the shower, use the, it's, they always correct me on this. It's a foam cleanser, not a gel cleanser. So it's a foam cleanser. Mm. My face just feels so clean after it. Then I go the toner, a mm. couple of dab, 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 bit of this, bit of that. Then the structure serum, you, you think it's like, um, yeah, baby gravy. Yeah, baby <laughs> gravy <laughs> to the face, but feels unreal. Yeah. And then you use the, the gel moisturizer, isn't it? So yeah, gel this moisturizer. Has, peptides amino acids and vitamin e mate the gel moisturizer are unreal i Steroids used some other moisturizer the other day because this is my tomorrow skincare stuff so it's sitting down here yeah and it, i've put this different stuff on oh. to tomorrow and it felt like putting sunscreen on made you break out before bed yeah the key with this one is just use a, a little bit don't mm. douse it just use a little yeah. bit and you get a nice even spread and you feel as Higo says a million bucks after a million, million bucks it's so good after shaving your skin's looking unreal by the way if mate. you do want it thanks mm. mate uh, if you do want to pick it up you can head to uh, tomorrowskincare.com.au something like that yep. I don't know and you can use code NTF that'll give you 20% off and you'll help support your boys yeah no they're legends please uh, use that code and let us know if you do uh, because we want to see you have nice skin we know a bunch of you have bought it they said everyone's been running up the code so we appreciate it mm, love next you. we have Manscaped the Dons the Goats 2.0 yep. um, they are coming out with some new stuff soon yeah, oh, we can't mention that yet. Yeah, they're not coming yeah, out with new stuff. Yeah, breach of contract. But they already, <laughs> this is new stuff here. Hydrating body spray, 16 mm. in one, uh, soap, all that stuff. Feels so good, you that can hydrating. You buy everything on the website and it'd be unreal. So, I don't know, like, I really love the products. Even, have you used the cologne? Yeah. Bro, it's actually, I thought it'd be, yeah. you know, like you got some cologne from Kmart. Oh. Like, I've been complimented on it so many times. My mum... Not that my mum means anything. And there's been other girls as well. But my mum went up to me. She's like, and she worked at Chanel as a makeup artist. So she yeah. knows her fragrances really well. And she's like, oh my God, what's that fragrance on you? Yeah. I'm like, mum, this is the Manscaped one for 50 bucks. I love it. It's like my everyday stuff. Same. Like, and then, you know, I've got some more expensive stuff. You, you save like, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, savor it. But the, the Manscaped stuff, mate, it is. It's a good everyday one. Oh, it's perfect. 
it's got to be done even yeah sometimes on dates i've worn it as well Ooh. and shit like that and it's actually you get a good kick out of it so yeah i don't know you can you can add it on when you get the lawnmower 4.0 or whatever yep and um again go to manscape website use code ntf 20 percent off and free shipping yep and you will help your boys out yeah thank you all for supporting us we really do appreciate it um you said on dates have you been on any dates lately yeah yeah a few let, really? oh fuck <laughs> what no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> date. Yeah, been date. We're not talking about dating today. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, nothing like that, lads. Just kiss the homies goodnight. That's all. Yep. Yep. No, nah, good stuff. Um, we got a question the other day. Someone messaged us and I couldn't find it. I just yeah, remember reading yeah. it. Um, and they said, any tips for moving out? Can you talk about it in the podcast? So I'm sorry, mate. I've forgotten your name. Um, You're a dickhead. Yeah, I know. But, but tips for moving out, mate. We've been almost a year yeah out of home now and and wouldn't have it any other wouldn't way wouldn't have any other way it's been a fantastic experience and I, I personally go home to my family and i'm like go for two hours or whatever i'm like fuck i could not do that like, i love him to bits but man i could not live with him yeah 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 um it's it's a wild run. i i just i forget um yeah well like living with you know more than one other person in the house it's a, a whole new experience you got brother to- pisses me off dad pisses me <laughs> off mum pisses me off they all have something to say about something <laughs> Um, but yeah, love them to bits. Yeah, so we'll give them a few tips for moving out um, today. I mean, I suppose our experience is probably different to others because we, yeah. we're lucky enough that we had a little bit of financial stability yeah. um, to be able to like pull the trigger. But all right, let's say you're moving out. What? How much do you want to have in the bank account, like as a minimum? Because like you need to pay one month rent up front. Oh, true. Yeah, you got to yeah, pay a bond. About that. Yeah. You got to, you know, like, let's say you already have all the furniture. Yeah. Then you sort it, but like, you got to expect to pay water. Before you move out, I want to actually just provide like an argument for why you should move out when mm. you're ready, of course. But, you know, there are these people staying at home till they're, you know, 48. And I, there was very, a man I hold quite highly and he gave his opinion on it. And he told me, he was like, you know, moving out is an investment in yourself. You know, mm. you might be paying two, 300 bucks a week. But you are developing and becoming more independent and growing yourself as a person. What if that job interview when you're 30 to land your dream job and you get it because you're more developed than the other person, you've mm. had more independence and you've got a better perspective on life because mummy and daddy aren't paying for the roof over your head. Mm. Um, you're on your own kind of thing. So I thought of it like that. And you know, that, that might not be the case, but I just thought it is an investment in yourself. Um, you know, shout out to your parents. I don't really do anything for us anymore. We wouldn't have it any other way. We love them to bits. We don't need any more babying. No. Um, but I, I think it is an investment into yourself. It might be two, mm. 300 bucks a week. I think it'll pay dividends in the future though. Yeah, hugely. No, it, a genuine investment. And like, you know, I know our personal development has uh, mm. been accelerated because of it. Uh, my first tip would probably be when you do move out, get yourself a trailer and a land cruiser. <laughs> makes it real easy to pick up stuff on marketplace yeah i remember our first day that was so fun when we just literally went around melbourne i was negotiating with people on marketplace all right yeah. we got a fridge we got a couch we got a table and chairs and we did laps whipped it all up we had your land cruiser we had the the trailer just picked it all up in one go yeah done moving out completed it mate dedicated day to it yeah fucking hell that well that's that, that's that thing of like penny rich pound poor like we just went around and picked up everything we needed mm-hmm. within the day. Like, I'm sure we could have got better deals if we went to this spot and then the oh, next, next week. Ex-girlfriend was telling me how shit the couch was. Bloody full of complaints, mate. I don't oh, see mate. you bloody chipping in here. Stopped. That couch has been fantastic. Oh, mate, got a lot of good use out of that couch. <laughs> have, we <ever? laughs> yeah, have we ever, lads? Um, Boys, I'll do it, yeah. We, we got the couch for 100 bucks off Marketplace, fridge for 200 Yep. Table and chairs that are about a break for 200 as well. Yep. Um, and we... Paid about a grand for a coffee machine. Just make do with what you can. All right, we need more tips, tips, tips. Um, so firstly, uh, ways to save money. You can meal prep, save money and yeah, time. Yeah. Make sure you're doing that. That's a non-negotiable. Even if you're Get not into done. weightlifting or bodybuilding, just make meal prep. I can't believe people save would so make money. food every night. For, if I go to Uber Eats, 40 bucks at least for the meal. Mm. You know, when, when they charge you eight fucking dollars for delivery oh. and when you eat a decent amount 40 50 bucks any day of the week if i calculate the cost per meal for meal prep you and i would be quite similar maybe mm. mine slightly more mm. four dollars max 
There you go. And you're satiated. That is full. a $38 saving per meal. Yep. Good. Next tip is uh, to do with food for me. Uh, have greens. Don't forget to eat greens. I stopped eating greens. Is that a moving out tip with you generally? Yeah. No, for people like me who um, just ate the greens their mum and dad gave them. Um, when I moved out, I stopped eating greens and fruit um, and I felt shit. Yeah. <laughs> I actually remember being at footy training and just you're craving fruit and yeah, like yeah. I never crave fruit. That's unreal. Um, so make sure you don't make the same mistake Big as me. healthy man now. Mm, what yeah. other tips are there, bro? There's oh, heaps. don't move out with people you don't can't live with. Mm, that's a good tip. Um, Who's that? I don't know. Who is that? Oh, it's Higo. Is it? Bro, it's definitely Higo. <laughs> Fucking hell. Wait, let me... I'll just let me... Yeah, get him in. He goes been here for the last 20 minutes, standing out the front. Yeah, get him in here. <laughs> Is he coming in? All right. Yeah, we're going right. to wrap we'll this up pick here. it up here. Jump in the camera, he goes, say g'day, because they're, they're watching. <laughs> yeah, it's still filming. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fire yeah. out, this folks knocked on the knocked on the bloody yeah. thing. Good, you in? Um Say hi to everyone, shout out, say hi. Hey guys. Good day guys, he says. Good. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Yeah, real the fast. footy's on guys. But yeah, tips for moving out. Um, well, maybe we'll pick it up next time. Yeah, get a good mate like Jack Higgins that comes around all the time and just watches the footy at yours and uh Yeah. Uh, give you shit tips about Yeah, give you shit tips. Yeah, 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 you shit tips. Well, <laughs> awesome. Thanks for listening, guys. Alright, um we're gonna watch the footy. Um go Dons, I reckon. See ya, bye. <laughs>